In this video, I attempted to build mechanical principles in LEGO starting with the most basic mechanisms and then using a bunch of them to make a complicated chain mechanism, so let's get started. I want to begin with the simplest mechanism, so I started with the most basic of them all, gears. I also want to motorize a bunch of the mechanisms all at once, so I'm going to hook up each one to a motor to prepare for that. This is a gear chain, which is basically just a larger amount of gears that make a chain. And these are compound gears, which are really useful for changing the gear ratio in a smaller amount of space. And speaking of space, Squarespace is actually the sponsor of this video. Squarespace is an all-in-one tool to help you start building your brand and online business. But before I tell you more about them, I need to build these mechanisms. This is a belt that can drive a gear through an actual chain rather than through a gear chain. Confusing, I know, but stick with me. All of these mechanisms are basically ways to transfer motion to a different axle, and at the end of this video, I'm going to make a long chain of mechanisms to make a motor turn another axle with a 64 sub gap, so make sure you stick around. Another type of gears are bevel gears, which essentially can make an axle motion turn 90 degrees. And this is a camshaft, which can make an axle move up and down rather than rotating. By the way, all of these mechanisms are powered by circuit cubes, which are LEGO compatible motors with a much smaller footprint compared to official LEGO motors. They also have kits, light cubes, and a bunch of other stuff, and they were kind enough to give me a 90% discount so I could make this video even cooler. So if you like what you see, I'll leave a link below for you to check them out. Okay, now I'm going to speedrun building linear actuators. This is the most basic design, which uses two arms and a rotating gear to turn notational movement into linear movement. This is a scotch yoke, which, when combined with a spinning arm and a sort of box to hold it in, also creates back and forth movement. And finally, here is a sun and planetary gear system. Usually this second gear would just spin in place, but because its axle is also connected to an arm that is locked parallel to this plate, it means the Technic beam has to rotate instead of the gear. Now I want to try and use one of these mechanisms in an actual build. There's lots of cool uses for them, but automatic sliding doors would be pretty cool. So I started building. We can build it on this 16 by 16 plate and use the scotch yoke mechanism to open and close the doors. I connected both yokes at the back with four gears, that way they turn in opposite directions, and then I started building the doors. They both have these vertical gaps that fit each rotating piece so that it turns the rotating movement into back and forth movement. Then I built this small room inside and a roof, and I also added this dial at the back to make it easier to turn. It reminds me of a jail cell, so I'll add a small cot and this toilet for our prisoner to enjoy. Okay, now that I built a real example that actually is really cool of where a linear actuator can be used in real life, let's move on to some more simple mechanisms, like this rack and pinion using rack gears, and this LEGO universal joint which can be used to change the angle and direction of an axle's motion. Next I want to build couplings. Okay, let's start with an old ham coupling. It has three parts that all slide together, and when it is moved up and down on one end, it can still spin at the output. Then I built a base for it that has this way to easily move the output end up and down, and an orange toothpiece to show that the movement stays the same. It's honestly really satisfying. Here's another type of coupling that is really cool. This is an animation of it moving, but it was pretty difficult to make in LEGO so I ran out of the right parts, but it still sorta works. The height of one end can be different from the other, but it also works as another type of universal joint. And just like building LEGO mechanisms, building your own website is hard as well. Ah, 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 don't skip ahead, because Squarespace is the best tool out there for building your brand and growing your business's online presence. Buying domains and websites through Squarespace is made simple with no hidden fees or price hikes, and they even have a video studio to help you make engaging videos to further your business's online presence and drive sales. Think of it like this, when I make a YouTube video, there's a bunch of things I have to do and many different programs I have to use, and it can be the exact same for starting your own business. But with Squarespace, all the tools you need will be right in front of you. Squarespace makes it easy for your creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With Squarespace's member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, and newsletters. I personally like how easy it is to create a portfolio or gallery with Squarespace. They even have password guarded portfolios to share private work with your clients. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash rjmbricks to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. But Anyways, back to building mechanisms. Here's a really satisfying mechanism called a Schmidt coupling that uses three of these interesting Technic axle pieces which allows you to move the output axle side to side and not just vertically. For this next coupling, I'm going to use these brown flower stems along with some cylinder pieces to make a pin coupling which can be used the same way as the others but is also really satisfying to watch spin at an angle. 
Another type of universal joint is a CV joint, which basically uses three universal joint pieces to make an even bigger one. And here's a cool 90 degree joint using these macaroni pieces in place of the universal joints. The problem with universal joints is when angled, it means the output of the axle also has to be at an angle. But if we use a double universal joint, it can change the height and angle, all while keeping the end of the axle parallel to the plate at the bottom. Okay, now that I finished building all these common mechanisms, I want to motorize them using a bunch of these motors and Bluetooth battery boxes. That's actually really satisfying. And on the topic of motorizing things, here are six walking robots using another type of circuit cube motor. This one uses the friction from rubber bands to inch along, and this one looks like an ATAT -AT walker from Star Wars that looks like it's about to fall over every time it walks. And the four other ones all also have really cool mechanisms, like this six-legged creature, and this one that uses Technic bricks to lock the tires from spinning backward. Race time! Bruh. Ignore the fact that I turn them all on at different times. Next, here's some cool mechanisms from LEGO sets. I recently built the Airbus helicopter and it's absolutely packed with functions, like tilting blades, working landing gear, and a winch that actually goes up and down, and even a way to make the blade spin in two different speeds. But mechanisms don't always have to be motorized, and this set also has working doors, a functional joystick, and even opens up for access to the engine. And speaking of non-motorized mechanisms, Bruh. I have a LEGO Bowser set. Building time! This is literally one of the greatest sets of all time. His head moves side to side, you can open his jaw and shoot a fiery projectile, and there is even movement in the legs, arms, and tail. Okay, now that we've looked at some cool mechanisms from official LEGO sets, I want to take unique, weird, and random Technic parts and turn them into cool mechanisms. This bar piece clips into ball sockets and can be used to make a back and forth movement in the output axle. I also have this saw blade piece, and I want to take three of them and make a gear chain. They don't fit together when they are on the same Technic beam, but if I add another one above, it spaces them out right. That's kind of satisfying, and I also accidentally made a one-way gear system. Usually you would need a ratchet on the top, like this, yes that was an excuse to fit in another mechanism, but because of the shape of the blades, it stops it from spinning in one of the directions. Okay, next I'm going to use this wheel piece and make a belt system. I can also use this Technic bushing as the other pulley, and when we turn the motor on, it works the same way the chain does. It's also really cool because the two pulleys are different sizes which creates some sort of gear ratio. Next I want to use this weird gear lever piece to make an intermittent mechanism. This way, it only turns the gear every rotation, rather than constantly. I also have this weirdly shaped Technic piece that I want to use to create this unique motion profile. One side can be attached to an arm that spins, and this middle pinhole can run on a track that makes the long end go in a very weird motion profile. I also added this dentist green tile on the end to make it easier to see where the end goes. Okay, I just built over 30 mechanisms, and now that I know more ways to control motion, I want to build a long chain mechanism that spans across 64 studs to spin a gear all the way on the other side. I laid out four 6x16 base plates and made a row of Technic bricks all the way across for the mechanisms to fit in. I started by using some bevel gears to turn the motion 90 degrees and make it run along the Technic bricks. Then I ran the axle to the other side of the bricks and added another belt and pulley system which I connected to a gear and chain mechanism. Then I ran it to the other side again. I attempted a couple different designs here, including one where I made another chain that went vertical, but it didn't work too well, so I added some more bevel gear systems that went back and forth. Then I added these gears I haven't used yet, and a little gear ratio at the end to make the end gear spin faster. Because of the amount of force the motor has to put out to make everything run, the final gear doesn't spin very smoothly, but it's super cool to use all these mechanisms for one thing. And here's a bonus scissor lift type mechanism that I randomly built. Subscribe!